feel like I need a theme song from Rocky or Eye of the Tiger or something like that right now. We are getting ready to climb up there. I'm already winded. Wow. I'm not even sure how I'm supposed to drink this. Do you think any of this is necessary, guys? I mean, honestly. Piper, ask yourself. Is this necessary? Guess what? Your favorite animal is outside. Do you want to see a cow? You want to see a cow? Come here. All right, come here. Look. All right, Ella, come on up. Okay, look, you ready? Do you see him? This is hands down one of the prettiest places that we've ever stayed. And it's so hard to leave. Valle de Bravo has been spectacular with all of the adventure, the paragliding, the, the butterflies. The chickens, the turkeys. <laughs> the cows, <laughs> all the things. So yeah, we're, we're kind of sad to leave this morning. I know. But now it's off to Mexico City. Mm-hmm, for a couple weeks. just discovered inverted speed bumps. Here in Mexico, they're called topes. Speed bumps are. These are inverted. And they're way worse yeah. than speed bumps. Because they're diagonal. They're like drainage ditches that they put in the middle of the road. And even with our heavy duty sway bar and upgraded suspension, it's not fun. We're about, to, we're about to hit another one right now. We have now gone over 10, 10 inverted tobes. Yeah, we gotta exit, we gotta exit. Second hairpin turn. So we made it through all those horrible inverted tobes only to get onto the highway interstate and there was a huge sign above that said no trucks three meters high we are 11 feet one inch three meters is only nine feet ten inches so we had to make a split second decision to get off of that road now there's nowhere to pull over so here we go the fun of travel in mexico continues So our best course of action was to drive back into the city of Valle de Bravo and leave the same way that we came in on Monday. This is why we always allow lots of extra time on travel days because stuff like this happens. Yep. And then we all arrive a little stressed out. Today sucked. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It was supposed to be about a three, three and a half hour drive, and it took us about six and a half hours. So, to recap, we had a two hour detour around the city we had been staying in. Once we finally got up and over a mountain, our next struggle 
was that the toll road that we needed to go on for some reason was closed. I still have no idea why. So we had to um, detour through a city. That's where we got pulled over. All they did was ask where we were from, where we were going. They asked Howard for a copy of his ID. So we provided a paper copy of his passport. And then he handed it back and said, have a good trip. So we still don't really know why we were pulled over. And then immediately after that, we hit a tope that we didn't see going way too fast and slammed the CRV down to the ground pretty hard. Um, it seems to be okay. I drove it already, but it knocked our, um, our lights off of it and one of the braking cables came off, so, or the emergency cables, I should say. <sighs> Can you tell I'm drained? <laughs> I don't know how to make it any easier on ourselves because even if we map out the route, which we do, like there's no indication that some of, some of these things you just cannot plan for, plain and simple. So I think it's the sacrifice that some of us are willing to make to experience the amazing things that we have, but it's hard. Days like this are very hard and it's not all glamorous and, you know, I'm feeling it right now. But anyway. I mean, we're all safe, that's the good thing. Everything's fine, but it's definitely stressful. So as you can see, I'm smiling again. <laughs> Sunday was rough, uh, but it is now Wednesday. Uh, we took Monday and Tuesday to catch up on work, relax, do laundry, all the like normal life things. So we are recharged, and where are we going today? Uh, Tio Tiwakan. Good job. I feel like I need a theme song from Rocky or Eye of the Tiger or something like that right now. How many steps do you think we're gonna take? I think the main one is the third tallest pyramid in the world. So I'm gonna guess a thousand steps up just on that one. What? Oh yeah. my gosh. I think it's 300 meters. I better limber up. Maybe it's 100 meters. <laughs> we'll see. Into our trusty CRV. We are on the way to Teotihuacan. 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 Tio How, How many times do you think we practiced that? Tio Tiwakan. Tio Tiwakan. Okay, anyway, so uh, it was abandoned in, I think, was it 580 or somewhere around there? Um, and the Aztecs rediscovered this ancient city, which once had a population of over 100,000. Yeah, it was 150,000, I yeah. think. And then they all just vanished. And there's no real record or indication as to what happened. Apparently this was also an area where they did a lot of um, like, sacrificial... Yeah, yeah, like ritual sacrifice. Yeah. So... So that's cool. Yeah. Uh, the Aztecs discovered it, mm -hmm. um, and they're the ones who named it Teotihuacan, which means the city of gods. There is a sun pyramid, a moon pyramid. A bunch of other buildings. But remember, this was an entire city of 150,000 people. Now, today, I think it was 20 square miles at its peak is what the estimate was of the size of the city. And today, the protected grounds are only, I think it's one square mile, maybe. So it's really just like the central corridor with um, the main pyramids and then a couple of the side buildings. And this was a city that in Mesoamerica was like the city that you wanted to come to. Based upon the archaeological digs that they've done and some of the bones, they've learned that people came from as far away as Guatemala to come here, serve in the army, and then ultimately were sacrificed, so. Yeah, and that's over, a, a, no, that's a thousand kilometers away, Guatemala is. That's quite far for someone to travel way, way, way before any other means of transportation besides walking or a horse. Yeah, it's kind of mind-blowing. So that's where we're going today. of 
the city. This is the main plaza. 100,000 people could fit here. And in the center, you can see a raised platform. And that's where they would hold ceremonious rituals. Attention, my people. And tucked behind this terrace pyramid is this much more ornate pyramid. Also, hot tip, if you want the whole place to yourself, come on a Wednesday. There is almost nobody here. Yeah, I think there was like one big school group and then just a couple other tourists. Yep, so Although it's I just... will say, at the top of the Pyramid of the Sun, yeah. It looks like there was a lot of people up there, so we just maybe have not found them yet. <laughs> yeah, see Omo? Oh no. <laughs> It's a little windy today, as you can see. <laughs> uh, so we are walking along the Calle de los Muertos, which is the Avenue of the Dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it used to be over five kilometers long, but today it's only two. This leads to many of the sites at Tia Tehuacan, including the third tallest pyramid in the world. And they said that there actually used to be really big residences. <laughs> they said we could equate it to like the rich and famous of like, Hollywood, right? So yeah. some of the homes were 75,000 square feet. I mean, I can't even comprehend that. We live in 200 square feet. <laughs> yeah, I was almost thinking that was a typo, but it checked out. We ventured away from Howard and came down here and found this passageway. I'm gonna go check it out. Wow, this is awesome. You can still see a lot of the original paint. Look, up on the walls here, and then all the way down. This is, what, thousands of years old? What kind of paint is that? I think one of the coolest things about Teotihuacan is that everything was done with purpose. From the layout of the road to the position of the building, everything was done with such severe intention, and I think that is really cool. They even redirected the river so that way it lined up with the city grid. I mean, come on. Very forward thinking. Yeah. All right, we're trying to pump ourselves up because we are getting ready to climb up there. That is the third tallest pyramid in the world. By the way, the tallest one is in Egypt. The other two are here in Mexico. And we're gonna do it! Okay. I'm already winded. We barely climbed. nine minutes even with that lengthy stop to catch my breath to get to the very top the views are amazing that was a workout Whew, we 
her back on the ground. That was a lot of steps, but we have more exploring to do. Man, I am beat. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot of walking. I mean, this was, what was it, one kilometer? Two kilometers. Two kilometers. But man, oh man, all the steps. And it got hot. Mm -hmm. But it was totally worth it. We learned so much. Um, this is just such a really cool experience to think about how long ago this was built and how magnificent it is, is just incredible. I mean, I, it, it almost leaves me speechless. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I can't imagine 2,000 years ago trying to construct things like this. Without modern machinery. Yeah. And the lines are perfectly symmetrical. Yeah, and lined up with the stars. That was one of the most impressive things was the idea that these giant pyramids are in exact position that aligns with the stars in the sky. So for them to be that aware and for them to be able to translate that to Earthen construction is just incredible. Mm -hmm. Super cool. We're walking now to La Gruta, which is a restaurant inside of a cave. And it is adjacent to the historic grounds, but it's not inside of the grounds. I am so hungry, so I'm very excited. <laughs> Wow, it's a little better than a corner torta stand. This is so cool. Mm. Oh man. Chata, mezcal, and fire. Your favorite things. <laughs> All wrapped into one. I'm not even sure how I'm supposed to drink this. <laughs> Should I... Your face is gonna... <laughs> Can you blow it out? I don't know. So refreshing. I thought the food was excellent. It had, I guess, what was like the equivalency of like a three small corn tortillas with smoked pork. The salsas are very good, clearly homemade. This was delicious. My flaming uh, horchata with mezcal, also delicious. And the surroundings are beautiful. And the service. The service is excellent. I would, I would love to come back here on a night when they have performances because I think they have dancing and singing and all of that on, I think, the weekends. So I'm not going to do all those crazy things that he did with this because I will burn myself. But what I gathered from that was that replacing the candle in the grotto as a symbol of rebirth, rejuvenation, a new soul, he said, so that when we leave here, we will feel reborn um, and rejuvenated. So we're gonna go put this in the grotto and see how we feel when we leave. Uh, we also, the translation of this place, called this the uterus of the earth. This is so cool. 
but let's find a good spot for it. Five o'clock in the morning. The dogs are less than pressed. You all packed up. Mm -hmm. So I have a early flight out of Mexico City to LA. So I am heading off to celebrate my best friend's bachelorette party this weekend. So we're going to Palm Springs. So it feels a little weird to be leaving Mexico. Like we've been living here for a month now and Kind of sad. I'm gonna miss you. Mm, miss you. I miss you. How's uh? How are you getting to the airport? Oh man, that's a long story. So we can't drive because of <sighs> ridiculous things. A, our car's too old. B, we couldn't fill out the complete paperwork online. I guess A, the car's too old. Period. Right? It's just too old. It's just too old. So the downside of having a 22-year-old car, it's all fun and games until some city tells you your car is too old. But it has a picnic table. <laughs> the picnic table does us no good in Mexico City. Um, so I have to Uber. I have to take an hour Uber ride to the airport, which isn't a ton of money. Um, it's like, I think it's going to come out. The max it's estimating is 25 bucks US. So to go an hour, I mean, that's really not bad. Mm -mm. It's just early and I'll be alone. That's all. But the good news is, Uber works. Uber, yeah. My uh, driver, Daniel, should be here in a minute, so I gotta go. See you Monday. security this morning was a breeze like I got I think I got to the airport at 6 o'clock and by 6.08 I was at my gate so can't really beat that With Caitlin having fun in Palm Springs, the rest of the Amigos headed out for an amazing nighttime experience back at the pyramids. Okay. So we're walking over to the uh, projection show and they have these really cool little headset units that are synchronized to the show. And not just audio. Augmented reality experiences were unlocked to help us learn more about the people who lived here and the buildings that remained. But the real star of the night was the incredible projection show on the Pyramid of the Sun. Synchronized to narration in English, this almost 40-minute program took us back to the rediscovery of the site by the Aztecs and restored the vibrant colors of the pyramid and the buildings as they were originally painted. Through careful animation, it told the legends and history of Teotihuacan, including the placement of the pyramids to align with the stars in the sky. After learning so much about the site, it was pretty unanimous that we should have done this nighttime experience before venturing out during the day to explore. The nighttime experience is a separately ticketed event held during certain nights, and we'll have a link below for more information. It is definitely a can't miss if you plan to visit Teotihuacan. We're just scratching the surface on Mexico City. I mean, we haven't even gone into Mexico City yet. We're out in the suburbs, man, where they got, you know, pyramids and stuff. Yeah. So we'll have a lot more to experience and a lot more to show you coming up. So make sure you stay tuned to Mexico Mondays with the RV Amigos.
at six o'clock, all three channels, that's us, Eat CRV, and I'm Not Lost, I'm RVing, will have Mexico content every Monday at 6 p.m. With the RV Amigos. Thanks for watching.